little friends. Um, we're going to do a child's pose starts. Um, so always say when we start in child's pose, if that fold right away is too much for your knees, feel free to press back into downward facing dog for a moment and like stretch your legs out. Maybe pump your knees a little bit in down dog, walk it out, and then when you're ready for that child's pose, fold. You can bring your knees out a little bit wider to the edges of your mat. Tops of the feet to the ground, big toes together, and then just let the weight of your forehead relax to the ground and your arms relax out in front of you. Awesome. Take a big exhale all the way out to empty. And then we're going to breathe in for three, two, one, and hold. Breathe in for another three, two, one, and hold. And then a final three, two, one. Hold that full breath. Relax the body. And then exhale completely. Let it go. From the bottom of this breath, inhale into your low belly and your low back for three, two, one, and hold. And then bring the air into your mid-abdomen and your mid-back for three, two, one, hold it. And now fill all the way up to your chest, all the way to your shoulders. Once you've got that full breath, just relax around it. And then pace the exhale out slow and controlled down to empty. Just transition into your ujjayi breathing from here. So start to sip the air in through the nose, slow and deep. And then on the exhale, just fog up a mirror out through your nose, slow and controlled. So just those muscles in the back of the throat that we're using to bring the air in and release back out. And then as you make this intention that you're slowing down and you're paying attention and you're connecting to your body, we just get to let the breath guide us in the experience and we let uh, you know any stresses or anxieties or things we're fixing or changing or planning all start to melt out to the edges and it's not that that stuff disappears right that's not the practice of meditation it's that we are bringing ourselves back into the present moment back into that connection just with that breathing just with the inhales and with the exhales so take what works for me and leave the rest behind. We'll find just a couple more rounds of breath here. Walk your fingers forward just a little bit till your elbows lift off the mat and give a big press forward. Your forehead might even come off the mat. A deep breath in. And on your exhale, just press nice and deep back through the hands. From that child's pose, just lift up to a tabletop position. And then keeping your right knee underneath your hip, just reach and stretch your left leg back in space. You can press into the ball of your left foot and just rock a little forward and backwards on the ball of that left foot, stretching out the back of the left leg, staying with that breathing. And then get that left knee underneath your hip. Take the same thing with the right leg. So just reaching your right leg back in space, pressing into the ball of your right foot, and just rocking a little forwards and backwards on that ball of the foot. Find that neutral flat back, hands and knees, and then start to work into cat and cow, warming up your spine. Cow is where we're dropping through the belly, lifting up through the chest, tilting up with the tailbone. And then the cat where you're letting the weight of the head release as you curl through your spine, lift up through your back, and let the tailbone drop down. And then as you work through that nice and slow and controlled, you can let yourself rock a little forwards or backwards or push out to the edges through the hips or through the shoulders. Start to find a neutral flat back, hands and knees, 
and then keeping the left palm underneath your shoulder, turn the inside of your right wrist forward, your palm is down, fingers are to the back. You can massage this side to side, back and forth, or if you wanna roll the hand out, you'll peel the hand back to the fingertips off the mat and then roll it back forward till the heel of your palm comes back down to the ground. And whatever you're choosing to work with here, just massaging out the hand, the fingers, the wrist right into your forearm. Back of the hand can come to the ground with your thumb pointing inside, fingers to the back. Little circles, side to side, back and forth. And then thread the needle for your right arm. So left hand's under your shoulder, knees are out a little wider than the hips. As you get the right arm up, just take a moment and roll out your wrist. Move through your fingers. And then following a deep inhale, take an exhale just to dive the right arm underneath the left and bring the shoulder and the side of the head down to the ground. Left hand or forearm anywhere at your side, resting or pressing away from the body. You can also take the back of the left hand and tuck it uh, to the outside of your right hip behind you. And then unlike child's pose where those hips are dropping back towards the, the heels, in this one, we want the hips right up above the knees so that the weight of the torso is coming right down into the side of the head. And then as you find yourself in this big stretch, getting right into your shoulder and into your back and into your spine, use that breathing where the inhale comes in and creates the space that your body releases into on your exhale. Press the left hand to the ground, draw your right arm from underneath, and then twist that right arm open to the sky. We'll come back into our tabletop. Bring your knees back directly underneath your hips with the right palm under your shoulder. Turn the inside of your left wrist forward, thumb out to the side, fingers backwards, and start to work on that left wrist, that left hand, that left forearm. And again, if you want to do the, more of the rolling out, you're going to lean back and peel the hand off the mat back to your fingertips and then just slowly roll it back forward till the heel of your palm presses down to the ground. Nice, take the back of your hand into the ground. And then with the right hand under your shoulder, your knees out just a little bit wider than your hips, twist your left arm up into the sky and give a roll out through that left wrist. Draw a deep breath in and on an exhale, dive the left arm now underneath the right, finding that thread the needle. Again, right hand or forearm anywhere at your side, resting or pressing to the ground or taking the back of the right hand and tucking it behind the outside of your left hip. You could also think of as your left arm is stretching and reaching out to the right, your left shoulder is pulling back slightly to the left, so lengthening out through the, the arm as you're breathing.
and then press it into your right hand. Inhale to reach the left arm from underneath. Twist open to the sky. On the exhale, you can just come down into that tabletop. And then step your feet up to the top of your mat and find a forward fold from standing. Let all 10 fingers connect to the ground. So bend your knees as much as you need to. That could be your fists or palms as well. And then give your head a slow nod, yes. Take a slow side to side nod, no, letting the weight of the head just relax and release. Keep the weight heavy and vertebrae by vertebrae wind up. Head is the very last thing to come up as the head comes up. Inhale to stretch your arms tall in space, arc slightly back. And on the exhale, we're coming into chair pose, Utkatasana. So everything can be at hip bone distance, or if you do big toes together, you can bring the knees, ankle bones, and thighs to all press right into center. We want to check that our hips aren't coming forward in that squat right. You're driving those hips backwards in space. And then we're getting really strong through the leg muscles here as we press to the ground. We're getting strong through the glutes, pulling back up away from our knee joints. Core muscles engaged. And then with the arms lifted, the shoulder blades slightly toning in towards one another. For a prayer twist, just bring the hands into your chest. Draw a deep breath in. And on your exhale, you can hinge a little forward and then twist open to the right. So left elbow to the top outside of that right thigh. And then you can think about that you're lifting the sternum up towards the level of the knuckles of your thumbs. Just letting that top shoulder stack right above the bottom. We always want to check when we're twisting our chair that as the spine is twisting, the knees aren't twisting. They're staying squared up towards the front of the room. Stay with that breathing. Nice, Brian. And then take the weight to your left foot. Inhale your arms and your right knee all the way up to a one-legged mountain. So warming up our one-legged balance. Extend up through the fingers, lift up through the spine, lift that right knee up. Find something in front of you you can focus on that's not moving. Perfect. And then we'll cross the right ankle over the top of the left knee or thigh. And it starts to come into this figure four balance. So hands can be into your chest. You could also put one hand to your knee and one hand to your heel. You can think about that you're notching up the indentation on the outside of your ankle right above the, the ridge of the knee, ridge of the thigh. And then that you're letting that right knee gently flex down as you find some dorsal flexion in your right foot. So heel pointing out to the left as your toes flex back and in. Nice breathing. Nice, Aaron. So inhale to lift up to your one-legged mountain. And then pretend you've got gymnastic rings your fingertips can grab onto and pull down on. And as you pull down on the rings and press into your left foot, extend that right leg forward and out from the body. And it, it's more of a lift first and then extension afterward. Awesome, friends. Let the right foot come down to the ground. Bring the hands in. On an inhale, reach up into mountain. And on an exhale, hinge out from your hips and take your swan dive down into a forward fold. Inhale, halfway up, lengthen through the spine, tone the shoulders in. Plant the hands, step back to your plank. You can go right to down dog or exhale halfway down, root to the tops of the feet. Inhale, upward facing dog. Hips are lifted, tuck the toes, and come back into your down dog. Awesome. Take a little walk out through this first down dog. Flatten the circle of the palms down into the ground, just kind of slightly wider than shoulder, right at about shoulder's distance. Spread out into your fingers and use a little bit of grip. Release the weight of the head. Biceps are toning in towards center line. Let your left heel pull to the ground as your right knee bends, and then pull your right hip back away from your left hand at the same time.
Let the right heel pull down towards the ground as the left knee bends, and then let your left hip pull back from your right hand. Bend both of your knees just a little bit and let your hips pull back away from the hands as you really find that strength and that length, and then let the heels start to pull down towards the ground as you keep all of that intact. Inhale your right leg to the top corner of the back wall to a three-legged downward facing dog. Press your heel back and up in space. Imagine I was standing back behind you with a yoga block and I was pushing that yoga block into your heel and wanting you to press that heel right back into the block. On your next exhale, bring your knee over to your left elbow or a tricep, shoulders above your hands. Inhale, re-extend your right leg up, three-legged down dog. And then exhale your knee over to your right elbow or tricep, shoulders above the hands. Inhale, reach it back up in space. And then the foot up between your hands on that exhale. You might have gotten it right where you want it, or you might take a little walk up. Once we're feeling nice and set up in that low lunge, high lunge. So you're on the ball of the left foot, the back left heels off the ground. Feel the press down into both of your legs. That's kind of more of an outward motion and then feel the tone of your thighs in to stabilize. You can start to get a little bit lower in this stance as you like. Find those arms up nice and tall in space, not lifting up away from the shoulders, but plugging down into those shoulder sockets as you reach up through your fingertips. And then same pray, prayer twist we took in chair. So hands to your chest, deep inhale, and as you exhale, just hinge forward, and then twist open to the, the right, bringing that left elbow to the top outside of that right thigh. And then notice where your gaze is. It can start to play with your balance to take the gaze away from the ground to the right. But if you can start to work it more towards the right, it also can help to open up in the twist here, right? Stacking that top shoulder over the bottom shoulder. Awesome, friends. So you're going to open that right arm to the sky and then drop the left hand right underneath your left shoulder. You could also be on your fist. You could also be on your fingertips. Perfect. So take a breath into that right arm reaching and on your exhale, bring the right hand to the inside of that right foot. So runner's lunge, you're going to walk the right foot more towards the right edge of the mat. Slide your left foot a little bit back into the left. And then we can work our forearms all the way down to the ground. You can also stay on your hands if you'd like. Or you can bring your forearms down onto your block. So gaze to the ground, crown of the head reaching forward in space. So one way to think about it, this is kind of like you're doing a forearm plank position but we've got that right foot up in space. We wanna watch that we're keeping the right knee right above the right heel, so we're not letting that right knee push beyond the heel. And then you wanna pretty much have your hips on the same level in space, and there would be a tendency here where your left hip would be sinking and dropping down. So you're kind of finding that stretch in that right leg, in that right hip, and then finding the strength right around the center, right around the core, right around the hips to stay in this position. Find those last couple rounds of breath. Nice cat. The open from here, guys, is to a wide-legged forward fold facing over towards the left side of the room. Once you've got the width of your stance where you want it, let's inhale halfway up. Hold that half lift, and if you want, you can start to fly your arms out to the front and back of the room. So gaze is down, crown of the head is reaching forward. Bring a little bit of that shoulder strength in, and think about your spine just reaching straight out in space. I know technically our spine doesn't go super straight, but that idea, awesome, Preston. When you're ready, friends, exhale to fold. And then your choice here, right? Ragdoll frame. 
pulling the floor in front or behind you or grabbing onto the outside of your big toes, your feet, or your ankles, or maybe there's another variation you'd like to take. One of the things to think about that's a little bit different in a wide-legged forward fold versus that regular standing forward fold is that your legs are going to do a little bit more work here to press into the ground, to get the hips back and up in space that then your spine can fold down from. Get down to the end of the exhale that you're on and walk up into a low lunge position, both hands framing the right foot, ball the left foot to the ground behind you. For Vashistasana, side plank, left hand is your base. We can go onto the outside edge of the left foot as we put the right arm over the left and then take that right hand to your hip or up in space. There's lots of variations in side planks. So if there's one you want to take, feel free to. That could be on your forearm. That could also be dropping that left knee to the ground underneath your hip. There's a little kickstand. Awesome, Jen. Find that breathing. Feel that lift of your hips up away from the ground, right? That's our core muscles, but getting right into our, our oblique side body muscles. Okay, friends, so turn into a plank, breathing at the top. And then hinging forward, slowly lower for five, four, three, two, one. Hips comfortably pressing to the ground. We'll start to lift up into locust pose, but then cross the ankles. Bring the left hand or the back of the forearm to the small of your back. And then extend your right arm forward in space. Find the length through the back of your neck. Find that lift up through your chest, that lift up through your thighs. And check in with your breathing. Awesome, Melanie. Okay, guys, just shift your body over to the left, chest and chin down, reach your right arm to the right, palm face down, and then press the left hand into the floor at your side, and let's just take shoulder pigeon while we're here, so onto the outside edge of that right hip, and then you can plant the left foot to the ground behind your right leg. Left hand or forearm can be at your side. You also might choose to tuck that left arm behind you to the outside of your low back. Weight of the head can relax out here. Another variation you could think about is that you're finding a quadricep stretch with your left leg. So you're bringing that left heel to your sit bone and then taking the hand to the top of the foot of the ankle and gently kicking the foot into the hand, deciding how you want to point that knee, whether it's more up or down or back. If you'd like for these last rounds of breath, you could stretch and reach your left leg straight up in space. Your left hand could grab onto the inside of that thigh or calf or peace sign fingers to the big toe as you extend that left leg up tall. And then we'll roll back down onto the stomach. Center ourselves on our mats, tuck the toes, take that press up into your plank and then reach the hips back up nice and tall into your down dog. Awesome, give it a few rounds of breath in our downward facing dog, you're doing great.
Take a deep breath in, and as you exhale, bend your knees, take that step up into your forward fold at the top of your mat. Inhale halfway up, lengthen through the spine, strengthen around it. Exhale to refold, and then hold navel to spine it empty, press to the ground as you reverse swan dive. Inhale, arms up tall, maybe a little arc back at the top, and chair pose on your exhale, take your squat. And take that squat as you lower it, feel into the muscles of your body engaged, of your low legs, of your core. We'll bring the hands into the chest, draw a deep breath in, and then on your exhale, you can take that twist open to the left, so your right elbow to the top outside of your left thigh. Feel that press into your heels, that grip through your feet. That gaze twisting over to the side of the room, if not slightly up in space. Watch that your right knee is not bending into center, right? Keep the feet at hip bone distance if you're doing hip bone distance, and then those knees right over the heels pointing forward. And again, if your big toes together, feel the squeeze of those ankle bones, those knees, those thighs, all pressing into center as you're twisting. Nice, Sharsti. So root into your right foot this time, friends, and then inhale to draw your arms and your left leg up to our one-legged mountain. Nice and tall up through the body, that lift through your left leg. Find that, that object that's not moving that you're focused on. And then for our figure four, we're crossing the left ankle over the top of that right knee or thigh. The indentation on the outside of your ankle between ankle bone and heel can go right over the ridge of that thigh closer up towards your knee. Find dorsal flexion in the left foot. Your heel is pointing to the right, your toes are gently flexing back in towards the shin, knee is gently flexing down. Hands to heart is awesome, or one hand to knee, one hand to heel, or maybe there's another variation you're working with. Stay super strong in that right leg as we are taking that single squat in it. And then on an inhale, rise up to your one-legged mountain, and we're going to add that extension forward as you pull down on your imaginary gymnastic rings. And what this does is rather than pushing to fall backwards, is as you're pulling down, you're pressing down to that right foot, it's more of a press forwards in space, right out through your center. Use that breath. Inhale to lift and, and push. And on your exhale, just bring the foot to the ground. Take your hands into your heart center. Inhale to stretch and reach up into Tadasana Mountain. On the exhale, hinge out from the hips. Swan dive forward fold, Uttanasana. Inhale, half lift, Ardha Uttanasana. Plant the hands, step back to Plank Palakasana. Go right to Down Dog. Exhale, Chaturanga if you'd like. Press the tops of your feet, inhale, up dog, urdhva, mukhashvanasana. And exhale back to adho, mukhashvanasana, or down dog. Awesome. Let the left leg come back and up to your three-legged down dog. Okay, and again, imagine I'm right back behind you. I've got a yoga block, long way, so it's going the length of your foot. So the heel is pressing into it. The ball of the foot's also pressing into it, but it's more of your heel that's pressing into it. On your next exhale, you can bring your knee to your right elbow or tricep, shoulders above the hands. Inhale to reach it back up. Exhale to bring your knee to your left elbow or tricep, shoulders above the hands. Inhale, reach back up. Foot up between the hands on that exhale. Feel free to walk it up even a little more. And then when you're feeling like you've got that stance that you want, take your low lunge all the way up into your high lunge on the ball of that right foot. Right heel pulled up off the ground. Strong through the individual legs and then using those thighs to come in towards center line to stabilize. Bring the hands into your chest, draw that deep breath in. And then we're doing the twist over to the left on the exhale. So hinging forward and then bringing the right elbow to the top outside of that left thigh.
Remember that gaze can help the rest of the posture of our body. So as we open it more up to the side of the room, when we're ready for that level of balance, or even up a little bit in space, it can help guide that top shoulder a little more over the bottom shoulder into our twist. We're gonna take this into a low lunge twist so you can start to extend your left arm up in space and then just drop your right hand, fist, or fingers underneath the right shoulder to press to the ground. Okay, friends, breathe in. And then on an exhale for that runner's lunge, left foot to the inside, or rather left hand to the inside of your left foot. So walk your left foot over to the left side of your mat. Take your right foot a little bit back, a little bit to the right. And then this is going to be like a forearm plank, but with that front leg forward. And you can bring your forearms onto your block. You can bring your forearms to the ground. You could also stay up on your hands as well. And we're looking to keep that left foot rooted to the ground. That left knee right above your left heel. And then the hips where they would be in a forearm plank position. So they're not super high, lifted back up like down dog or dolphin. They're more right on level with the shoulders. That length through your low back. Use that breath. We're almost on this one. Start to walk out to that wide-legged forward fold, this time facing over towards the right side of the room. Fix the width of your stance. Inhale halfway up. Exhale, refold, hold navel, the spine empty, and reverse swan dive. Inhale your arms up nice and tall. And on your exhale, just bring your hands down into your heart center. Okay, so we're going to go into a wide-legged squat. So you're going to bring your feet in so your heels are underneath your knees. And then your feet are out at 45-degree angles. And then we're going to drop the sit bones a little bit back in space. Bring the hands to your thighs and just give a little shift side to side through your hips. That might help you figure out a little bit more the width of your stance. Okay, and then we're going to hold nice and strong and start to open the arms to the front of the room and the back of the room. Palms are also facing the right wall. Bend your elbows a little bit and let the shoulder blades tone back in towards one another. Okay, if you'd like, lift your heels off the ground. You might step the feet in just a little bit closer if you're balancing up on the balls of your feet. Right on, stay with that breath, you got it. Drop those heels if they were lifted. Take the legs out wide, come out of that squat. Once your legs are out wide, inhale your arms up to a star. And on your exhale, swan dive down into your wide-legged forward fold. Walk your hands up to a low lunge position. Right hand will now be your base for Vashistasana side plank. So coming onto the outside edge of that left foot, right foot over the left. And then reaching that left arm up nice and tall. Awesome. And yeah, we've either got that right foot as our base and you're just stacking the left foot right on top of it, or you could also put that left foot in front of the right foot as well. So you kind of heel to toe, heel to toe. Breathe into that lift up through the body. Awesome, friends. Turn into your plank and then take a breath in and we'll lower over the course of five, four, Three, two, one. Make sure your hips can comfortably press to the ground. Start to lift your chest and thighs off the floor. 
We'll cross the ankles, right hand to the small of your back, and left arm forward. Nice breathing, you got it. Almost there. Lift up through those thighs. Send back those feet. And on your exhale, you're going to lower down to set up our shoulder pigeon for the left arm. Slide your body over to the right side of your mat. Have your chest down. And then reach the left arm to the left side of the room, palm face down. You'll roll onto the left side of your body. And then you can stack the right foot over the, uh, to the ground behind your left leg. Right hand or forearm can be anywhere at your side. You could also tuck that arm back behind you in space and let the weight of the head just relax out. Okay, we could grab that quadricep stretch if you'd like. So that's just bringing your right heel in towards your right sit bone, sliding the hand to the top of the foot or the ankle. And then you're determining where you're pointing your knee, how much of a kick or pull there is between that foot and your, your arm. For the last couple rounds of breath, if you want, you can extend that right leg all the way up in space. And just you can grab onto the inside of the thigh, inside of the calf, or peace sign fingers up to your big toes. And as you're ready for it, just roll down onto your stomach. Center yourself on your mats. Take that press up to your plank. Shift your hips back up in space to your down dog. And then we're going to take a little hop up to our sit bones or lower the knees, drop one of the hips to the ground and bring your legs forward. Awesome. Okay, we're going to do some uh, poses for our core muscles. And I'm going to stack these back to back to back and then we'll get a rest at the very end all the way back on our stomach and sphinx pose. So the beginning of this, friends, is that the one that we'll be holding to begin with is just you're on your back, hips are to the ground, your legs are straight, straight up and you're reaching your arms up. So join me right here. Gaze is more going to the front of the room. And if your neck needs support, just send one hand back behind the base of the skull. So the fingers are just helping to press lightly into the back of the, the, the head. And you'll feel it. it's that lift up through the chest with the hips to the ground that gets those band of core muscles nice and engaged right here. Okay, and then you're going to take your left leg to a leg lift. So right leg stays where it is. Left leg comes halfway down. And then you're going to reach your arms to the outside of that right leg. You got it. Right leg straight up. Left leg at that leg lift. Arms to the outside of your right leg, staying with that breathing. Let's switch that out. So bring your left leg straight up. Right leg down to that leg lift. Halfway and then arms to the outside of your left leg. And again, your hand, one hand or both hands, can totally come back behind your head to give support. We don't want to be straining the neck muscles out too much here. Awesome. Grab your hamstrings, lift yourself up to your sit bones. Find that length all the way through the back. Excellent, and then you're gonna cross your ankles and in our boat pose, We'll bring the outside of the right forearm, the outside of the left forearm to the outside of the right thigh, and take that twist open to the right. Come to center, cross your ankles the other way. Outside of your right forearm to the outside of the left thigh. Take that twist open to the left. Okay. 
Awesome, friends. Okay, so to stretch out the abdominal wall and your low back, you're going to step back, lower yourself to the ground with your hips comfortably pressing to the floor. Lift up through that spine. You're right on the forearms in our sphinx pose. If you'd like, you could twist your gaze over your right shoulder. And then take your gaze across your left shoulder if you're twisting to the right. Come back to center. And then just laying out at the beach, so letting your arms and your head relax. We can bend through the knees and pick the feet up in space. You can give circles out through your ankles or circle the knees so the legs go into big windshield wiper circles, clockwise or counterclockwise. Let the feet come down. Take a press up into your plank and reach your hips back up to our down dog. Take that right leg up nice and tall to a three-legged down dog and then open the hip and bend the knee, draping the toes down to the left as that knee lifts up tall. You're opening the inside of the front kind of of that right hip, inside of the right hip towards the right wall. And then you want to watch that you're not twisting super deep in your shoulders, like not collapsing into your left shoulder, and that your left heel is also not twisting out to the side. So you want your left heel pointing straight back in space. Cross the right shin all the way up to the top of your mat to the seven shape of pigeon. You could also go on your back in reclined pigeon. And then we can slide that left foot back a little bit. We can either have the top of the right foot or the side of the right foot to the ground. We do want the knee out wider than the right hand. And then when you're feeling set up through your legs, and you can always make more adjustments when you're inside a pigeon, you can start to bring it down to your forearms. And take your head down to your hands or to your block or to the ground. We want the hips up on the same level with one another in space so you're just not dropping into one sit bone or you're twisting to the left or to the right. Feeling those hips up in space so they're equally coming down. One way you can always check that is that you're thinking the top of your left thigh, top of your left shin, top of your left foot is pointing straight to the ground. And just focusing on your breathing. Start to press to the hands, lifting up through the chest. Tuck through those left toes and reach your right leg back up to our three-legged down dog. 
You can stay right here, go to down dog or shift forward to your three-legged plank. Lower halfway down, press to the tops of the feet, inhale, up dog, and then take it back into our down dog. Relax the weight of the head, bring the hips back up nice and tall in space. And then on an inhale, take your left leg up, three-legged down dog. Open the hip and bend the knee, so drape the toes down over to the right as that knee lifts up in space. And when you're ready, just cross the left shin to the top of your mat. Make that seven shape with your legs. Up on your hands, you can just take that, that little bit of time to set the body up here. Slide your right foot back. When you feel like you've got your left leg set up, your right leg set up, you can take this down onto your forearms. Bring your head down to rest to the block or the mat or your hands. And think about the top of that right thigh, the top of your shin, the top of your right foot pointing straight down to the ground. Press to your hands, just bring your chest up in space. You can tuck through those right toes and then bring that left leg back up into our three-legged down dog. Stay here or find that full down dog or shift forward to your three-legged plank. Come halfway down, press to the tops of the feet. Inhale, up dog. Tuck the toes and reach back into your down dog. And then you can let those knees come down to the ground when you're ready. Swing your legs forward. Awesome. Slide your feet up towards the top of your mat. Find dorsal flexion through both of your feet, so pressing forward as your toes flex back. And then walk your sit bones back two steps on each one. Lift up through your arms. Have a little bit of a bend through your knees to start with, just a slight one. And then you're going to hinge forward on an exhale and take this into that seated forward fold with your hands to your shins, your hands to your feet, to the ground. You could use a towel, sweatshirt, or a, a strap around the feet, one end into both hands. And the nice thing is, is that you can always add more bend into your knees or take bend away as it feels right to you inside of the pose. Find that breathing.
if you've had your gaze mainly down with the crown of the head reaching forward, it might be nice to start to lift your gaze up. And I always think about this like the posture of a road biker, a road cyclist, where your chest is coming forward in space as your gaze is up. Stay there for our last little bit here or just come back to where you were with the gaze down and the crown reaching forward. An inhale just takes the arms up tall in space, lengthens the spine. And on the exhale, just bring your hands down and in. And then we'll do the rest of class on our back so you can slide your hips up. Roll your spine into the mat. Bring the knees into your chest. Wrap your arms around your knees and give yourself that nice side-to-side -side rock, massaging out the hips, the sacrum, and the low back. Plant your feet to the ground at hip bone distance. Knees up in space. And for bridge pose, stretch your arms down along your sides. You want to be able to touch your heels. That gets the heels right underneath the knees. And then we can bend the elbows at 90. Press the triceps to the ground. Lift the hips off the ground. And then as you're doing this, you want to bring your shoulders in a little bit closer towards one another. So kind of squeezing in through those shoulder blades. You can keep your arms reaching straight up or interlace your fingers at your knuckles in a bridge and then roll onto the outsides of the biceps as you extend your knuckles down towards your feet and press into your arms. If your eyes are open and you're gazing at your belly, you will see the rise and fall of your breath with the ujjayi breathing technique, that diaphragmatic breath that's moving through the whole torso. Slowly, vertebrae by vertebrae, let yourself roll down into the mat. And then take a happy baby pose with the peace on fingers to the big toes or the hands to the edges of the feet. Knees bend out nice and wide. And then you're stacking the ankles above the knees so the bottoms of the feet are pointing to the sky. Gently pulling down on the frame and just giving that side to side rock. Stack your knees over to the right. Come onto the outside edge of your right hip. Let the left arm reach to the left and take your gaze out to the left side of the room. Right hand can rest or give a gentle pull to the top and outside of that left knee thigh. And just noticing the effect of that deep breath in this kind of a twist. Or when that exhale rolls through, your body really gets to just relax deeper into the twist, into the stretch.
Bring your knees up to center. Give yourself a nice rock on the back. And then we'll switch that twist out, so stacking your knees off to the left, onto the outside edge of your left hip. Reaching your right arm out to the right and twisting your gaze out across your right fingertips. And just feeling that breath getting to snake its way through your spine. Roll onto your back, out of that twist. Just bring your knees into your chest. Give yourself that nice rock. And then reach both of your legs straight up in space. You can grab onto the back of the legs. You can even grab your block and put the edge of the block underneath the hips. Give a little roll out through your ankles. Stretch out through the arches of your feet, through your toes. Legs could open up wide if that feels good. You could do elbows to the ground with your hands to the outside of the legs, or you could take the hands to the inside of the legs and give a little bit of a pull down. And then finally, just bringing those knees back in and giving that hug. And we'll start to move into our final resting pose, our corpse posture, Shavasana. So you can add any layers of clothing on that you need to keep yourself nice and comfortable, nice and warm. You can use any of the props around you. And we're looking just to set ourselves up here where we can relax and let go into stillness. So letting those legs extend out in front of us and the weight of the feet and the legs just relax. With your hips and your back down into the ground, those shoulders weighted, you can just feel the breath moving through the body here. Weight of the hands and the arms, just heavy and relaxed at your sides. And letting your head relax, the facial muscles release, eyelids close. And letting yourself just float here.
So nice and slow, just start to bring some life back into your body. Moving your fingers and your toes. You could stretch your arms back behind you in space to a full morning stretch and just roll out your ankles and roll out your wrists. Turn the weight of your body onto your side into a fetal position. Relax. Maybe take a couple deep rounds of breath. And then you can come up to a cross-legged position or whatever pose you'd like to end class with. Your cross-legged position, you could be rooted with the sit bones to the ground or you could put them up onto the edge of a block or a bolster or a blanket. Take a moment just to get the spine up nice and tall, so just to lift the shoulder heads up in space and then just roll the shoulder heads down away from the ears on the back. and feel that length coming all the way up through the back of the neck. Inhale, reach your arms out wide, stretch tall. And then on the exhale, just draw your hands down into the heart center. Have a fabulous rest of the evening. The light in me greets the light in you. Namaste. Yeah, I said time.